Welcome to a bit of game dev. So there have been a couple of times in the past where I needed a 3D pathfinding system for flying objects and AI, and now specifically the game I'm currently working on. But Unity's nav mesh was no help in that regard, so I decided to take matters into my own hands. Keep in mind I will only do an overview code explanation in this video since step by step explanation would take too much time, but I will be leaving a link to the GitHub project so that you can download and see how I implemented the whole system. As you may have heard, the go-to algorithm for pathfinding is the A-star algorithm. You can find a detailed explanation on A-star on the Wikipedia, but I'll try to sum it up as best as I can. First, we need to define a grid of points that will represent our world. I did this by drawing a texture where the white pixels are free valid points and the black pixels are invalid taking points. Now we write the code which samples our texture and instantiates the points. For each point we need to store its neighbors, if the point is invalid, and its coordinates. These values won't change, they always stay the same. Now let's define a class point data for the values that are dynamic and change for each path. Other than the coordinates, we need the values G-score, F-score and the indices came from, which I will explain next. The G-score and F-score are needed to determine the best path. G-score is the cost of the path from the start point to some end point. In this example, we can see how we calculate the G-score for each point. We add by 1 since the distance from the previous point is exactly 1 unity meter away. The F-score is calculated by getting the G-score of the endpoint and adding the estimated cost of the path from the endpoint to our goal point. In this example, the G-score is 2, and let's say the estimated distance from the endpoint is 8. We get the value 8 by using a heuristic function. In this case, heuristic function only returns us the distance from one point to the other. Now, if the G-score is 2 and the heuristic function returns us 8, the F-score is 2 plus 8 equals 10, so the f-score of this point is equal to 10. Finally, the came from is needed to store from what point did we reach the current point, that will always be the indices of one of the neighboring points. Now that we have our data defined, we can go ahead and start writing the A-star algorithm. The inputs are the start point and the end point. The first thing we do is create our dataset from the existing points and set the initial value of G-score and F-score to infinity and came from to minus 1. And as the first point, we set the G-score of our start point to 0. Then we add our start point to an open set variable which can be a simple list or a more optimized variation, a heap. Then while the open set is not empty, we get the point with the lowest F-score and check if that's our goal. If not, we loop through each neighbor and if it's not invalid, we calculate and check if its G-score from the current point is lower than the G-score it already has. And if it is, we assign the values to it and add it to our open set. Ok, now let's see the A-star in action. The yellow points are the points the A-star has traveled through, while the blue points are the points in the open set the A-star has not yet gotten to. You can also see the debug line when the A-star calculates the F-score and G-score of its neighboring points. Now that we have a basic understanding of how A-star works, I decided to add avoiding other moving characters or agents. I tried many ideas and algorithms to make this work and almost all failed, but I finally found something that might work. So the idea is, each agent has its priority, and no other agent can have the same priority. This can be defined in a number of ways, but the one I chose is who is the slowest has the biggest priority. Each point now has a list of agents who will pass through it along its path. Next, when an agent finds its path, it writes in each point along its path that he will go through them, at what time he will pass, and when did he write that information. Now, there are two conditions. First is, if the point the agent wants to go through is already assigned by a bigger priority agent, the agent compares its time to reach the point with the bigger priority agent, and if the difference is small enough, the agent must avoid that point. The second condition is reversed. If the agent wants to go through a point that is already assigned by a lower priority agent and the difference in times to reach is small, it must instruct that lower priority agent to find another path and avoid that. And this system worked pretty well as you can see. Now there probably is a better solution than this one, but I had a lot of fun coming up with the solution myself. Now it was pretty easy to convert this to a 3D pathfinding algorithm just by adding another dimension to our grid.
For the world creation, I defined the bounds of the world and for each point I checked if there is a collider overlapping with the box. If there is, the point was declared as invalid. Now I created this simple example to show the world creation in progress. We can change the scale of the world. And this is how the world determines invalid and valid points. Now, I really didn't like the sharp turns the agents were taking. I mean, maybe ground characters can move this way and be somewhat okay, but no flying object looks good flying this way. So I tried converting the path points to a curve using Sebastian's Bezier Curve Asset from the Asset Store. And that worked pretty well until the agent needed to find another path. So I got back to thinking and what I came up is pretty simple. We define the agent's move speed and turn speed. Next, we go through the path by the agent speed, sampling the path points along the way. The agent moves in his forward direction constantly, while at the same time turning his forward direction in the direction of the current sample path point. This gives excellent flying movement, but it does reduce collision avoidance since the agent doesn't strictly follow the path, but only tries to follow it. The more we increase the turn speed, the better the path follow. But I consoled myself by telling me even a human player bumps into things occasionally. So there you have it, a 3D pathfinding system with optional agent avoidance. Thank you for watching this video, don't think of this as a tutorial, it's more of an interesting way you can use different algorithms in your project. I'll be leaving a Patreon link in the description for anyone who wishes to support me, and as always remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.